Hi there, and welcome to the 49th annual Santa Barbara Old Time Fiddlers Festival, um, the stay-at-home uh, global pandemic uh, edition uh, for the year 2020. Um, and uh, welcome to the Old Time Mandolin Workshop. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit, um, and then we'll learn a few tunes. So let me just start off by saying, um, you know, old time music, what is it? Um, there's probably some heated debate still, but um, I would... For me, I'm going to define it as um, American uh, traditional music, so North American uh, traditional music. Um, this was the music that was played and sung and danced to um, in the years uh, prior to commercial recordings, prior to jazz, prior to radio, um, prior to all that stuff. This is what people uh, pretty much enjoyed um, at uh, festivals and fairs, um, kitchens. Uh, you know, you name it. So um, old time, um, I would, you know, again, define as traditional songs and dance repertoire uh, from North America. Um, it's a blend of Northern European music um, and West African music primarily. Um, I've played Irish traditional music for 40 years or nearly 40 years. Um, I've also played uh, trad jazz uh, for 20 years, um, Balkan music for about 20 years. Um, and I'm relatively new to old time. I'm about a decade, a decade and change in. Um, and, um, um, you know, I, I love this music and I, and I love it not because it's derivative European traditional music, but I love the mix of what old time offers, which is you get syncopation and, and, and a bluesy funkiness um, from the West African influence. You get some percussive and other melodic things from Native Americans and various... Uh, various European ethnic groups that that um, that you know pass through and and out of you know and stayed obviously. Um, so that's that's that. Um, I just when I whenever I hear anybody say, "Oh, I really hear the Celtic roots in old time," I'm like, if if I just thought this was derivative Celtic music or derivative European music, I I, I would have passed and moved on a long time ago. Um, what excites me about this music is the blend um, of obviously unwilling um, West Africans. Um, and then uh, Northern Europeans primarily. And then coming up through, you know, New Spain, you had, um, you had you know, this sort of indigenous uh, Spanish blended mu you know, music that kind of came in contact as well. So by the time you get, it, get to Texas, you've got musicians playing in sort of a Central European uh, indigenous uh, Mexican uh, tradition, you know, Norteño music. Um, you've got uh, you've got uh, you've got just full blown um, African American blues, and then you've got just a great fiddle tradition. So old time is a old time is a hot mess. I'll just I'll just put it put it out there like that. Um, the term old time um, was coined by record companies trying to market their product in the early 1920s. So when they were calling it old time in the early 1920s, this music was really freaking old um, by then. Um, so there was a lot of new music, uh, trad jazz was, you know, what we call trad jazz, I guess they would, would have just called it jazz, um, in the 1920s was becoming very popular. A lot of, a lot of other genres of music were being recorded. Um, but old time was one of those, one of those many genres. Um, over, over time, and, and I think fairly quickly, um, old time came to, uh, be marketed to white audiences, um, and so predominantly songs, and, um, and uh, fiddle tunes, so dance repertoire primarily played on fiddle and banjo and by larger string bands that included guitar and mandolin and uh, you know, other, 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 uh, other string and percussion instruments. Um, and then um, over time, they also marketed to black audiences, to African-American audiences as race records. Um, and this, um, over time, you know, they, they essentially pushed an agenda of blues and jug band as being the African side of the music, and the and the more fiddle banjo stuff as being uh, the the European you know white side of the music, even though banjo is at its core a West African instrument that sort of morphed as it as it hit the, as it hit the New World um, in the Caribbean, and then came up and became uh, became the banjo that we know. Uh, fiddle, obviously, you know, um, originated probably in the uh, in the Central Asia Near East. Um, but kind of came to its uh, form um, in Europe. So um, cool blending of, of musics. 
Um, within old time, there's a lot of varieties. So you've got the Appalachian old time, which I think most people, when they think of old time, they think of Appalachian um, traditional music. So North Carolina, um, Georgia, uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, um, and then, you know, and then elsewhere, the music spilled into the Ozarks and there's a strong Ozark tradition. Um, in the Northeast, you've got, um, you've got New England Contra, uh, Contra music, which I would define as a, as a, as a type of old time music. Um, further up in Canada, you've got a strong uh, Quebecois, French Canadian tradition. Um, you've got um, Metis and, and Native American fiddle music um, across Canada and, um, and down into the, you know, down into the Great Plains states of, of the United States. Um, there's just a great Midwest fiddle tradition um, as well. And then there's just a really, really strong Texas tradition, which I would say there's a strong Texas fiddle tradition, but then there's Texas blues and rags um, and, um, and uh, I'll call it Norteño, but, um, but essentially um, the sort of Central European indigenous, um, indigenous um, music that sort of arose in Texas and is still played there and in Arizona and New Mexico, uh, the Yaqui and the Tohono O'odham. Uh, Native American tribes of, of Arizona have both have strong fiddle traditions as well. So um, old time, very broad, Cajun Creole. Um, I think I, I don't think I mentioned Cajun and Creole, but the musicians of, of Louisiana um, and, you know, again, the spilling over into Texas as well. Um, so uh, so that's that's old time. Um, as far as old time mandolin goes, um, a lot of it was uh, a lot of what you hear, especially with reels and breakdowns. So melody, melody, uh, melody. A lot of what you hear for reels and breakdowns is mandolin as a chordal instrument um, in larger string bands. Um, I really struggled with this for a long time because I'm a melody player. I do play some rags, I do play some blues, but mostly I play fiddle tunes. Um, so, you know, reels, breakdowns, shottishes, and, and, and the like. Um, and I really struggled with this because initially when I was listening to old 78s from the 20s and 30s, um, I was mostly hearing it as a chordal instrument, which a lot of the times buried under guitar and banjo and other things, you just can't hear it at all. Uh, so um, not, really a, not really a rewarding uh, approach. Um, so in old, old time music, um, you know, you do hear a lot of that. That said, I've really been digging deep and I found a lot of great examples of melody players from the 20s and 30s. So um, what we do as modern old time, uh, old time mandolin players, because if you go to a jam session, I think anywhere across North America, um, you are going to hear mandolin players uh, playing melody. Occasionally chords, but mostly melody alongside the fiddle player. Um, at old time jam sessions, um, you know, I, I learn the melody if I don't know the tune, which is frequent because there are hundreds and hundreds. Um, and then, you know, once I kind of get comfortable, sometimes I'm sort of mimicking the fiddle player to a certain degree. So I try to, I try to mimic some of the double stops and other things. Um, sometimes I just get into a vibe where I'm like, oh, the banjo player who's kind of dancing around doing portal stuff and droney stuff and melody, um, I'll, uh, I'll plug away at that. And, um, and sometimes I, you know, I get really into the guitar player and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm gonna just do some chords for a couple of passes. Um, a lot of these tunes get played, you know, a dozen or more times at a jam session. So uh, you got to keep yourself, uh, you got to keep yourself engaged. So uh, I, I often morph, uh, morph what I'm doing um, based on the people I'm, you know, people I'm listening to in, in a jam session. Um, so let's see, what else did I have here? Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, I, I do want to share, um, I present, I've put together a Spotify list um, years ago. Years ago, I had put together some a three CD collection of, of, of old time mandolin from old seventy eight uh, reissues, and one was all reels and breakdowns and some songs to sort of mostly I made it for myself to like start to understand how to approach this music um, in an authentic um, way, whatever the heck authentic means. Um, and then I also did an, uh, did one that was essentially blues mandolin players, you know, country blues mandolin players like Ann Gratchel. Um, Charlie McCoy, um, as well as jug, you know, jug bands. Um, and then um, I did another one of rags and there's just a strong, strong uh, mandolin ragtime tradition uh, where in fact we are the melody player. Um, a lot of times the fiddle players don't even show up. Um, so um, so these are all sub genres of old time. These are all well within the, um, the, the greater category. So as an old time mandolin player, again, reels and breakdowns, there is a historic precedent for us to do this. Um, I doubted that years ago and I've, I've come around to hear a lot of great, a lot of great players. 
um, on old 78s. And then obviously the modern players, whether that's Gary Harrison, uh, his band, um, uh, uh, the Indian Creek Boys, I think is the name of the band. Uh, whether it's uh, Mike Compton, who's amazing, uh, bluegrass player and an old time player, um, and um, uh, Foghorn and String Band. There's there's a, there's a lot of a lot of really strong mandolin uh, and old time players out there, old time mandolin players out there. Um, I think I'm starting to ramble, but um, um, I, I, some people I would ask you to sort of listen to: um, Ted Hawkins from Skillet Liquors. Um, we're actually no, we're not hearing him now. Um, but um, yeah, Ted Hawkins from Skillet Liquors plays in a very staccato 16th note uh, sort of style. Um, Charlie Simmons from Scottdale String Band uh, plays in a, what I would call a very syncopated funky style. Um, I'd say he's probably more my, my uh, role model. Um, and then, you know, in the more blues and ragtime, um, uh, you know, Howard Armstrong, fantastic uh, fiddle player. He's only a couple of mandolin recordings, but... Um, but his uh, his State Street rag is is seminal great uh, mandolin ragtime piece, um, and then um, Charlie McCoy does a lot of great jug band and blues. Yank Retchell plays uh, plays mostly blues, uh, but then Ted Hawkins and Charlie Simmons uh, from Skillet Liquors and Scottdale String Band in particular, I highly recommend. Um, so let's see for this workshop again, we're going to learn two uh, tunes from Southern Illinois. Uh, the first is a fiddle tune from Alonzo Janes. Um, who was born a slave um, and um, and wound up raising five kids, putting them through college in Southern Illinois. Um, and um, that that tune came to Los Angeles through um, through Mel Durham, a, a great uh, a great Southern Illinois fiddle player. Um, and then we're also going to learn um, a mandolin piece from Alan Woodward, um, and that was. Um, uh, published in a book called Dear Old Illinois, which is a book of uh, Southern Illinois fiddle tunes, um, mandolin tunes, banjo tunes, um, but mostly fiddle tunes and songs. So um, I'll just throw out there, um, uh, David Bragger, our festival director, um, I believe still carries this CD, but this is all of Mel's Southern Illinois repertoire. Highly recommend it. Um, and then um, this is the book Dear Old Illinois. Um, you can see there's a mandolin player in there. So uh, we, we were legit. Um, and I highly recommend this one as well if you read music. Um, there's three CDs that go with that, um, but um, um, unfortunately, you know, it, 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 they, there wasn't space to, re uh, to record everything, so, um, including, unfortunately, Alan Woodward's uh, mandolin stuff. So um, without further ado, um, let's, let's play a couple of tunes. Hi there, so let's get started. Um, we're gonna start with a relatively simple uh, fiddle tune adapted for mandolin. Um, and the tune is in A, and it's called Alonzo Janes. Um, and it's named after a fiddle player named Alonzo Janes. So um, let me give you a quick backstory to that one. Um, I learned this tune from uh, David Bragger, our festival director, as well as Chris Berry, um, both of whom I uh, have the privilege to play in the band Sausage Grinder with. Um, and um, David and Chris learned it from uh, Southern Illinois fiddle player Mel Durham, um, who uh, relocated to Los Angeles um, and was very, um, I think inspirational and beloved by the old time community here in Los Angeles um, at jam sessions. Um, people will still stop and say, oh, that was that was a Mel tune um, and very warmly regarded and, and well remembered. Uh, Mel, uh, Mel Durham learned it from Alonzo Janes um, and uh, Alonzo was uh, African-American uh, fiddle player. Um, he was born a slave in Paris, Tennessee in 1850. Um, and uh, passed away in the 1930s in Pontiac, Illinois, um, and left behind a, a number of a number of great uh, great tunes that were mostly passed along uh, through Mel Durham to uh, to the LA old time community. So, um, without further ado, I'm going to play this once through at a moderate tempo, um, how I think it's supposed to be played, um, and I'll just share up front. Um, I get a hold of tunes, um, whether I learn them from source recordings or whether I learn them from sheet music and then cross-reference source recordings whenever possible. Um, I do tend to drift uh, quite a bit and quite quickly, um, making the tune my own, uh, which I think is important um, to make the tune your own, but um, but hopefully always rooted in a deep respect for, um, for the music and where it came from and the musicians that it came from. So uh, without further ado, um, I am going to play this through once at a moderate tempo and then we'll we'll break it down. So here goes.
Okay. So um, I'll break that down and the phrases are relatively simple and I'm, I'll get in close so you can see my fingers. Uh, the first, uh, first couple of notes here are mostly on the A string. So we'll just do that a couple of times. So that's the first, uh, first, first bar. So um, we're just gonna sh uh, transition from first to second bar. So it goes like this. So it's just going up the scale from A string to E string. Let's just run that a couple of times. Now let's put them together. Um, and my picking, I just follow the melody. So um, mostly a down a down pick uh, is is always the sort of default. But I'll do a. So nothing nothing complicated. Um, I would tell you it's a it's a bum ditty rhythm. Sometimes it's a. It's just an up, down, up, down, up, down, 16th note rhythm sometimes, but it just follows the melody line. So one more time with that, and then we'll go on to the next phrase. So and then the next phrase is starts on the, the A, the high A on the fifth fret of the A of the E string. that goes from the E string to the A string to the D string. So you're getting your money's worth on this one. So let's just run that, uh, those, the third and fourth bar real quick. So. So we're gonna put that together. So. One last time. Okay, so that's the first half of the A section. Uh, fiddle tunes tend to have an A section, a B section, sometimes more, but uh, but this is, this tune has an A section and a B section. So that's half of the A section. Um, a lot of those elements will repeat in the second half of the A section as well as the second half of the B section. So once you kind of master this, you've, you've got most of the tunes. So um, second line, so second half of the A section is the same, starts off exactly the same. And then the uh, that last three uh, last couple of bars actually start off the same as the previous couple of you know ending ending couple of bars. So so almost exactly the same. The last couple of notes just um, it goes up to the C sharp and then down to an A. But let's just uh, run that. So that's the whole, uh, well, that's the second half of the A part. We'll put those two together. Um, we'll play through them uh, just twice, which is how it's done. And then we'll move on to the B part. So that, that second half of the half of the tune. 
uh, which has a lot of repeats in it. So you'll be delighted if you're struggling to know that you already know a lot of this. So um, here is the A part in its entirety. You don't have to do chords in there. I just always tend to emphasize with chords. Um, so the B part uh, starts off simply enough and then, um, and then uh, goes into things you've already learned. So here's how the B part starts. So one more time. So it's mostly on the E string, but you do drop down to that C sharp there on the, the C-sharp and the A-string. Repeat. So that's the first two bars of an eight bar B part. Everything else is a repeat from the prior section, so you'll hopefully uh, hopefully be a little relieved if you're if you're having any trouble at all. So uh, here it goes, and that goes up. So that's exactly the same. That those third and fourth uh, bars of the B part are exactly the same as the third and fourth bars of the A part, um, and the final. Uh, the final four bars of the B part are exactly the same as the final four bars of the A part. So I'm just going to play the B part in its entirety um, as you, uh, you you learn two new things here or two new uh, bars here, but everything else is exactly the same. So uh, here goes. One and ready. So that's the whole tune. Um, let's play through it. Um, let's play through it uh, from top to bottom, um, and I'll do it slowly. Um, and then maybe I'll just finish off by showing a few variations. I don't really do very many variations on this tune. Um, maybe some syncopated stuff and and maybe a few chording things. But um, I play this one pretty much straight up. Um, uh, I play it pretty much straight up without a lot of a lot of fancy. Um, sometimes I get too fancy. This is not one of those times. So okay, so one and ready, go.
that's the tune. Um, yeah, again, I, I don't I don't do a lot of variation on this. Um, I think you heard probably as I got you know sort of started spacing out, I, I added a lot of drone strings wherever possible. So uh, in a tune in A, um, that's typically wherever I can let an A ring, uh, sort of like a bagpipe drone, um, or let an E ring, uh, which is a you know fifth in the scale. Um, I'll kind of let those let those go um, for as you know wherever I can find a spot. Um, so that said, I'm going to play it more up to tempo um, and then just kind of let my, myself go with it the way I would probably play it if I were, you know, in a jam session or, or thereabouts. So, so uh, this is just for, just, for, just for amusement and to give you maybe some ideas. So. So for our second tune, we're going to learn the Old Red Barn, uh, which is a breakdown or reel um, uh, from Southern Illinois. And this comes from uh, a mandolin player from Southern Illinois named Alan Woodward. Um, he lived from 1912 to 1981. Um, he worked on the railroad. Um, he was the one who kept the track straight with the uh, railroad ties. Um, you know, so that was that was his gig. Um, Alan also made his own mandolins. Um, and mandolin was his primary instrument. It wasn't a it wasn't a fiddle player who also played mandolin or um, or thereabouts. Um, and I'll just share that uh, most of the repertoire that we as old time mandolin players play um, comes from fiddle players. You know, and I would say the vast majority um, of it comes from fiddle players. So um, it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. It's really neat um, that uh, this is actually an old-time mandolin uh, piece, uh, you know, from an old-time mandolin player who, um, you know, is a historical, you know, historical figure that we can call, uh, call from. Um, that said, um, this comes from the collection uh, Dear Old Illinois, which is a big, you know, big thick book of um, of uh, fiddle tunes, uh, dance, you know, dance repertoire and uh, and folk songs. Um, uh, compiled by Gary uh, Gary Harrison, the late late great uh, fiddle player, um, and um, there's a three CD collection in it. But um, uh, there's way more uh, way more tunes in the book than they could fit on on you know a whole lot of CDs. So um, unfortunately, we don't have the source recording for this. Um, so I did learn it from um, I did learn it from the the sheet music. Um, so I'll I'll play it as um, I'll play it as um, as as I remember it from the sheet music, and again um, old time music it's not it's not a museum uh, it's not a museum piece it's a living tradition so uh, I put my own stamp on things um, I drift pretty quickly from uh, the source material but um, uh, hopefully you know hopefully you hear a respect. Um, and a firm foundation in the original in the original material. So um, that said, let me uh, let me take you through the tune, and then we'll keep going and break it down. So.
time. That's the tune, um, and let me uh, let me squeeze in close here so you can hopefully see see the fretboard and follow my fingers. Again, um, the picking pattern. There's no firm bum ditty or anything else going on. It's just follow you follow the melody. Um, always a downstroke is the preference. So. So anyway, here goes. So um, that's the simplest possible way to play that. Um, and that's fine. Um, honestly, um, sometimes I play it like that. Sometimes I squeeze in a lot more busy work, but... Um, but I'll slip in and out of different ways of playing this and probably never play it the same way twice. But um, So you could do that. The way it's written is... The way I often play it is this. So that's, that's the first two bars. So it's a, uh, and then it does this. So a little bit of a tongue twister. I don't know what the word would be, but um, so you're kind of skipping in, you're know, toggling from the A to the D to the G to the D to the A string. So. And then back to the A string, and then back to the D string, and then to the G string. Let's just run that a couple of times because that can be a little, a little, a little hairy, maybe. put it in context so again and that's how it ends so the um, the a part the first four bars and the second four bars are very very similar um, it it uh, the the end of the first time through sits on that B string, kind of creating some tension and drama. And then on the second time through it, it resolves on the G. So let's just run that. We'll loop the A part a couple of times, so. slow it down a little bit.
that's the whole A part, you've mastered half the tune. So um, we'll move on to the B part. Um, it starts on the G, uh, the G of your E string, so the third fret of your E string. Um, and it mostly uh, mostly starts off on the E string and then, and then drops down into familiar territory with more of that sort of music box. Uh, um, sort of, you know, eighth note phrasing. So, um, so this is the, um, this is the B part. So almost all of it's on the E string, except for that B on the A string, the B, D on the E string, sorry. One more time. And then it kind of goes back into a similar sort of phrase um, as you were, you know, heard in the A part. So uh, on your A string, you're going to go C A, and then on your D string, and then back to the E string. Let's just loop that a few times. So that's half of the half of the B part. So let's just do that in its entirety. And then the second half of the B part starts off the same and is kind of the same. So So a lot of similarities in the in the way the phrases end in both the A and the B parts. But let's uh, let's do the whole B part together, and then we'll put the whole uh, the whole uh, the whole machine together here. That's it. Um, that's the whole. That's the whole tune. Um, why don't we? Um, why don't we put the whole thing together? I'll. We'll just play it together at a moderate pace here. So um, I'll just count us off, and we'll do the A part twice through and the B part twice through, as though we're playing for some playing for some dancing. So one and ready, go. <laughs>
So that's it. The Old Red Barn from Alan Woodward. Um, uh, again, I think probably just for amusement and uh, and to give you uh, give you all a little sense of what you can do with the tune. Um, I'll uh, I'll just play through it, uh, you know, at tempo with uh, with maybe a few variations. Um, Midwestern fiddling is notoriously busy. Um, and so, um, if I were playing a North Carolina, you know, uh, Appalachian, Appalachian, uh, tune, I would not do anything too fancy. Probably I'd more bluesy slides and droney stuff, but, um, here I, am um, with this tune, I like, I, I do like to stretch it out a little bit, um, add in some chords, um, add in some arpeggi, arpeggio type runs and things. Um, again, though, the, the tune as it is, is perfect. Um, it was just, you know. You get you you know you try to make things interesting for yourself. So, um,